let's go over the uh, basics of hernia. So we'll, this is the hernia is one of the most common uh, of surgical problems and also uh, one of the most common patients encountered in uh, uh, medical offices. So uh, a hernia is uh, by definition a, a rupture uh, in English. And it has been uh, recorded throughout history. Uh, there are description of hernia reduction dates back to Hammurabi alone and the Egyptian papyrus. Uh, hernia is uh, and can be either an enlargement of a natural orifice, just like patent processes, vaginalis in the groin, or hiatal hernia, or an umbilical defect, or a new or created defect uh, uh, due to tissue compromise or surgical or, or, or non surgical trauma. Hernia, by definition, is a collagen disease. Uh, means there is a fundamental defect in the processing of uh, collagen. Uh, to that, smoking add, uh, add, uh, adds an incredible insult uh, uh, by uh, <clears throat> enhancing uh, neutrophil elastase activity that causes uh, collagen uh, quality defects that uh, can contribute uh, to uh, directly to hernia recurrence or development of initial hernia. Uh, contrary to the uh, common belief, physical activity per se is not a cause of inguinal hernia specifically. Uh, it has been shown that uh, hernia is no more common in Olympic weightlifters than in general population. However, uh, uh, when it comes to body weight, obesity is a risk factor for ventral abdominal hernia, but it appears to reduce the risk of growing hernias for an unknown reason or mechanism. Uh, hernias is, is, is like, like basically an endemic problem. It's, uh, 5 million Americans have hernias and each year 700,000 will have it surgically repaired. Our uh, first uh, description of hernia officially dates back to 1804 by Sir Astley Cooper of England, uh, who defined hernia as uh, failure of the transversalis fascia and the peritoneum, which is the fundamental reason for hernia over the entire abdomen. So the integral layer of the abdominal wall is the transversalis fascia, fascia transversalis FT, and failure of that layer is the direct cause of hernia, not the anterior fashion of the not the muscle. Uh, scope of our service as far as hernia specializes in all kinds of hernia repairs from traditional uh, to open technique to more complex laparoscopic and robotic surgery. Uh, uh, as a personal number, I perform quite a hundred, like 400 hernias uh, a year, which has been my passion uh, from the simplest to uh, the most complex redo, redo uh, repairs, even those with, uh, who have lost uh, their abdominal domain. Um, few words about uh, approaching the hernia and when to refer a hernia uh, patient and when to expect that hernia should be repaired. Basically, uh, any hernia with symptoms, regardless of hernia size, uh, should be considered for repair and referral for a surgical evaluation. Any hernia that is visible as a visible bulge, the recommendation is this hernia, when it is uh, seen on the external abdominal wall, then it's large enough to cause future uh, bouts of incarceration and strangulation and the recommendation is for surgical consultation when it's visible. Uh, small hernia that can be can be felt only on physical exam with minimal symptoms, meaning pain uh, on and off, uh, occasionally with activity and, and not impacting daily activity of the patient can be safely watched. In the past, all hernias of all sizes of the abdominal wall uh, were repaired regardless of symptoms on the merit that these hernias will strangulate or uh, incarcerate. 
the paradigm has uh, in management has shifted and now small hernias that are not visible with minimal or no symptoms can be watched safe with. Five to seven percent of these patients will develop symptoms uh, over two years of follow-up and uh, will have their hernia repaired at that time. So it is safe to watch small and asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic hernias. If the hernia is visible, large, or symptomatic, and repair is indicated, and surgical consultation is recommended. What kind of repair the patient asks you uh, would be recommended? Uh, minimal invasive surgery can be applied uh, to all kinds of hernias, but they have their certain uh, indication that have shown uh, a remarkable benefit over open technique. And these are uh, uh, the indications. Bilateral inguinal hernias. When you have bilateral inguinal hernias, the approach will be the same. Three small incisions above the level of the umbilicus that can take care of both hernias at the same time. So that's a major benefit over open technique. Recurrent inguinal uh, hernias after open repair uh, to avoid going through a scar tissue or a previous mesh placement. Uh, Laparoscopic or robotic surgery is the standard of care for recurrent hernia after open repair. Groin hernias in all females, the standard of care should be repaired minimal invasive laparoscopically or robotically. Why? Because females will have more incidence of associated femoral hernias that can be missed, uh, can be missed uh, during an open technique and repairing them laparoscopically or robotically will patch both uh, inguinal and femoral canals at the same time. Uh, the last indication for laparoscopic intervention would be the morbidly obese. Statistically, a morbidly obese patient will fare better or with a minimally invasive approach because we avoid uh, local wound complication, uh, including hematoma, seroma, uh, and wound infection. For ventral hernias, all ventral hernias with fascial defects more than 2.5 centimeters, not the size of the sac, but the, the size of the fascial defect. If it's more than an inch, then minimal invasive approach has the advantage uh, because it allows us to uh, avoid raising subcutaneous large flaps. Complex hernias that are typically more uh, with fascial defects more than 7 centimeters should uh, uh, preferably be uh, fixed uh, by an open complex technique with component separation. The last note on this section is uh, indication for robotic surgery is the same indication for laparoscopic surgery. So any patient who qualifies for minimally invasive repair should automatically qualify for ro robotic repair. Uh, Outcome of minimal invasive surgery uh, has impacted the choice of surgery over the past decade or so with uh, specifically faster recovery and less operative, less operative pain that we're going to cover shortly. Uh, we recently acquired the Da Vinci uh, XI robotic system at Nazareth, and we have been shifted to the robotic approaches for 99% of our hernias. Uh, the robot consists of four arms, one, two, three, four numbered, uh, that allow us to insert the uh, instruments through these arms into the abdominal wall, into the abdominal cavity. So basically that's the picture that describes how the robot works. Port placement will be more or less just like a laparoscopic approach. Ports are a little bit bigger, they're like eight millimeter in size, standards. And then these arms of the robot will be attached to each of, of these ports. And the instruments will be, uh, will be slid through that arm into that port. And then the surgeon will take control. So typically, that's the OR setup. The patient is on the table. Uh, bedside nurse, scrub, scrub nurse at the bedside uh, with the robot arms uh, docked and deployed. The surgeon typically sits in the corner of the room, uh, 
have full control on all the arms of the robot with his two hands, using all the, all, also foot pedals as, as well. So these basically are the uh, uh, fine <coughs> uh, rested movements of the robotic console, and this is the robotic consoles, and this is a, uh, a close-up uh, view of the uh, console. So it's worn just like a glove in a video game. And as you can see, uh, all the movements are at the rest level, uh, which will allow really us a finer dissection, which is a major, major advance uh, as compared to the laparoscopic surgery, rather than moving the elbows and the shoulder. Uh, very advanced uh, uh, equipments and technology allow us to do very fine dissection in a very confined spaces that were never possible with the laparoscopy. Now being performed routinely with the robot, with the help of the robot and the robotic arms. One of the biggest differences between laparoscopic surgery and robotic surgery has been the visualization. Uh, Laparoscopic surgery uses 2D uh, images, whereas the robot will provide excellent 3D images. Uh, we just talked about the precision and rested movements that is allowed in the robot that is missing in the laparoscopy. With the uh, use of final dissection and suture technique rather than laparoscopic tacks and tack tacking guns, Mesh fixation has never been uh, easier, and that contributed to definitely less associated pain. From a personal experience, um, an inguinal hernia patient uh, will use about 12 pills uh, with the laparoscopic technique and the open technique. When we do them robotically, they will use, on average, about four to six pills. Uh, duration of pain is remarkably less based on personal experience. Patients have less post-operative pain with the robotic uh, approach for obvious reasons. We're avoiding the tacking gun and using sutures and closing the uh, peritoneal defect on top of the mesh covering it completely. Uh, utilization of the robotic system has really uh, made uh, the numbers of hernia being done in a minimal invasive approach really uh, inc remarkably increased over the past three or four years with advanced technologies uh, incorporating the robotic technology from intuitive. Um, why our program? So uh, the uh, comprehensive hernia program at our hospital is, is like the word says, truly really comprehensive. Uh, we take care of the uh, of all kinds of hernias, from the simplest to the most complex. Personally, I, as I mentioned, I do about a 400 hernias a year. Hernias and uh, hernia repair is my passion. Uh, we have a multi-specialty approach from uh, uh, anesthesia pain management, to PT, uh, and including also plastic surgery if needed. Uh, we're implementing and have implemented the enhanced recovery after surgery pathway, which is a patient-centered uh, uh, pathway aiming at reducing uh, post-surgical stress. This pathway starts in uh, three different phases, preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative. The aim of which is to disrupt the post-surgical stress response. Uh, that will eventually contribute to less inflammatory response, the mobilization of less inflammatory uh, mediators, less postoperative swelling and inflammation that translates into less postoperative pain earlier return of bowel function, earlier to return to activity. So the ERAS enhanced pathway starts preoperatively with patient education, including even uh, education on incentive spirometer. Use at home, breathing exercises and light exercises preoperatively, 
as well as most importantly, preoperative carbohydrate loading. So traditionally, we have the patient fast for eight hours before surgery with ERAS pathway, we're asking them to fast for only two hours, meaning uh, they will be specifically asked to uh, have a, a carbohydrate rich drink, which is a 12 ounces of either uh, Gatorade, grape, or apple juice, that is non-pulp, two hours before the time of scheduled surgery. Uh, that will uh, help replete the, the carbohydrate stores in the body and interrupt uh, the post-surgical stress response. During surgery, uh, we have multimodality uh, nausea vomiting medication based on patient markers and indications, plus very limited use of IV fluids intraoperatively as opposed to liberal use of IV fluids. So in, in open cases, we use uh, five cc's per kilos per hour of IV fluids. And in the laparoscopic robotic cases, we use three cc's per kilos per hour of IV fluids. That will limit the uh, IV fluid uh, <coughs> infused during the entire procedure to less than 700 cc's at most in a one hour procedure. That's greatly helps and limit postoperative swelling that translates into less postoperative pain and early return of bowel function. That is being fully incorporated in our practice at Nazareth Hospital. Uh, we use, again, the latest available innovation with the uh, DaVinci uh, XI platform. Uh, and on top of that, uh, as a team, we are committed to being available uh, and see patient uh, within 24 hours. In the morning, we can see them same day. The consultation comes late in the afternoon. We can see them the very uh, 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 next morning uh, in office. Uh, that will allow us to uh, provide uh, timely uh, uh, care uh, with uh, improved patient convenience and satisfaction. Um, as far as uh, specific questions uh, about uh, hernias, uh, I'll be happy to take them in the next 15 to 20 minutes uh, to answer any uh, questions. Uh, or, or clarify any of the uh, uh, information that I've went over previously. And thank you all for attending uh, this activity again. Thank you. All right, so I'll open it up for any questions for Dr. Nasser. Um, you can either type them in the chat or you can just take yourself off mute and ask the question. Great. So there's one in the chat. Dr. Nasser, who qualifies for a robotic repair? All right. Uh, so uh, any patient who qualifies for laparoscopic repair uh, automatically qualifies for robotic repair. And the certain classic indication that uh, literature and evidence-based information available uh, has more advantage over the open R. Uh, the four mentioned groups, people with bilateral inguinal hernia should be repaired robotically. People with uh, recurrence after open repair, hernia recurrence after open repair should be repaired laparoscopically and robotically. People who are morbidly obese should be repaired uh, robotically and laparoscopically because there is an advantage in terms of uh, avoidance of local wound complication. And Females with grown hernias should be preferably repaired with laparoscopic robotic approach so we can patch the, uh, the high incidence of associated femoral hernia. On top of that, all ventral hernias with a fascial defect of more than 2.5 centimeter, one inch fascial defect, should be repaired laparoscopically and robotically 
for better outcomes, less pain, and less wound complications. Thanks. So the next question is, how long is the expected recovery time? Thank you. So uh, the, the procedure, most of them will be a same day procedure. If we are fixing a larger hernia, then that might be a one or two day hospitalization for uh, pain control. Expected recovery uh, should be a week. Uh, limited activity should be not more than two weeks. So that makes it uh, a total of two weeks with the return of to work after two weeks with full activities allowed after robotic uh, uh, repair. As opposed to the open repair, which will take a little bit, a little bit longer for the uh, tissue to incorporate because you're putting the mesh in a different plane, usually takes three to four weeks. So one of my own personal questions, Dr. Nasser, um, you know, in talking to some patients, there sometimes is a little bit of anxiety about um, the robot because the physician isn't necessarily at the bedside. So how do you handle that discussion with your with your patients and what yeah. would you share to the to the providers so that they can also help that's, alleviate that fear? That's a great question. So as as you saw from the uh, images, surgeon is sitting away from the table. Uh, in laparoscopy, as opposed to robotic system, uh, I have two hands, so I can only hold two instruments, and the assistant will hold the remaining one or two uh, instruments, including the camera, because I can't do all four hands at the bedside. The advantage of the robot is there are four arms of the robot that can hold the four ports and instruments all at once and give the surgeon control, full control over the forearms. So, uh, let's put it in a, a simple way. The surgeon has full control on all arms inside the abdominal cavity and is not reliant on the assistant. So, the robot actually will allow the surgeon to avoid mistakes or possible injuries that can be caused by less experienced assistants. So that's the major advantage that the robot has offered. It's a full control uh, of all instruments by the surgeon. So nothing moves unless the surgeon moves it. Uh, so this is this is a, a, a great advantage and, and a superiority of the robotic system as compared to laparoscopic system. Uh, on top of that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the robotic console will allow us to do uh, wristed movements based on the wrists and not the elbows or the shoulders. And that translates into a very final uh, movements and uh, dissection in a very confined spaces very safely. And that's also another major advantage. Thank you. Does anyone on the line have any other questions for Dr. Nasser? Next question in the chat is, is hospitalization required? Well, uh, the uh, hospitalization, again, 90% uh, of the uh, robotically uh, repaired hernias will be a same day surgery. If we are all groin hernias will be same day surgery regardless whether they are initial or recurrent. Even if they are bilateral, they are same-day surgery, so it's an outpatient procedure. As far as ventral hernias, that depends on the size of the defect and how much needs to be done. Larger defects, five, six centimeters with more dissection may be associated with a little bit more uh, pain compared to smaller hernia. That may require an overnight stay for pain control. So basically, uh, at worst, it's a 24-hour overnight stay. Uh, more than 90% would be a same-day procedure. The last question I see in the chat is, when should we refer hernia patients to the surgeon? Thank you. So, uh, again, uh, per the uh, new paradigm shift in hernia management, uh, all hernias that I, I can see visible bulge, I recommend hernia repair. Or hernias that you can't see bulge, but the patient comes with groin pain or abdominal pain, or the small hernia 
should be referred for a surgical consultation uh, and consideration for repair. All incisional hernias, hernias that occur in the abdominal incision, should be referred for repair because incisional hernias are statistically at higher risk of incarceration and strangulation. All incisional hernias should be re repaired surgically, no except unless the patient is medically unfit. Then that's a different story. All incisional hernias should be referred. All hernias that are visible at the abdominal wall level or groin level should be referred because statistically they are associated with more uh, incidence of strangulation and obstruction. And hernias regardless of size that are symptomatic. Abdominal pain around the hernia, groin pain with hernia diagnosed on careful physical exam also qualify for a surgical consultation and repair. So, Dr. Nasser, as the program director for robotics at Nazareth, what are the um, procedures that we're offering currently on the robot? Uh, uh, as far as general surgery, I started the general surgery. Uh, we're offering, we're offering uh, cholecystectomy, all kind of hernias uh, from the groin to umbilical to incisional and ventral lumbar. Uh, and hiatal hernia, all are being repaired robotically. Uh, polystectomy, uh, as far as bariatric robotic sleeves are being performed by my uh, partner, Dr. Chiandera. Uh, colorectal, um, offer also robotic colectomies, right, left colectomies and LIRs robotically with superior advantages over laparoscopic or open uh, colectomies in terms of speed of recovery and outcomes, backed up by uh, abundance of literature and evidence. Uh, urology is, is in the uh, uh, process of credentialing for robotic prostatectomy and uh, uh, nephrectomy and ureteric procedures, Dr. Raganowski. Uh, GYN, uh, two surgeons are uh, being credentialed, uh, one of them finished her uh, lab training and being credentialed for her proctor cases. So a uh, GYN surgery will be available as well. Uh, so pretty much all procedures that can be done robotically are being offered, will be offered at Nazareth uh, Hospital, including also thoracic surgery, Dr. Uh, Sharif. So in short, uh, it is a comprehensive program. At the time being, uh, general surgery, colorectal, and bariatric are active. Uh, urology and GYN and thoracic are in the process of credential. Great, thanks. Okay. All right, so that looks like all the questions in the chat. Um, if anybody has anything else, please jump in. Otherwise, we're going to go over one more time um, the attendance. I think we have. Um, one person who has the identification of DZZQ1907, can you identify yourself so we can get you credit for this last session? You might be on mute if you're talking. Hi, um, they, they need to get the credit themselves. We won't be issuing credits. They need to go to the link claim credits, create a profile, then enter the, I, the event ID number. Uh, please note the event ID number will be different for every CME activity uh, we provide. Okay, and the other phone number that I don't have a name associated with is uh, 2153, and then the last two digits are 97. Who is that? All right, so I think that's everybody that I identified that I didn't have a name with. So, um, like I said, the DZZQ1907 or um, the 215 ending in 97 phone number. Not sure who you are. Can you identify yourself? Yep. 
Nicole, I guess we can ask if there are any folks on the line that have somebody sitting with them that should earn a credit, but not necessarily logged on, but is with somebody who logged on. Is there anybody out there today? All right. Then, as Kathy mentioned, there's also in the invite for this session, um, there was how to access the CE um, pages. So please refer to that. You have um, 30 days to complete the um, evaluation and claim your continuing educa education credits. Um, and as Jean noted, you would go on and you would build your profile and then you'd have access moving forward to other offerings. Um, we will be offering these monthly, um, rotating different surgical specialties to include all of surgery, GI, oncology, um, and cardiovascular. So I thank you for your um, time today and joining us on our first uh, session. Thank Nicole? You. Yeah. Did you want to tell them when our next session will be? Oh, yeah. Do you have the date, Kathy? Yes. Um, so the next session will be with Dr. Jaffe. And he is scheduled on June 11th. So that'll be our next one. But we will be um, advertising this. So please stay tuned for the fire. All right. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Nicole. Yep. Thank you.